Good afternoon, and it's fantastic to be here this afternoon just to tell you a little bit about the Office of Vice President for Teaching and Learning at University College Cork. What I'd like to do this afternoon is just tell you what we do, how we do it, and what we're seeking to achieve. But more important to say, perhaps, thank you to each of you who contribute to our office. Perhaps you don't know that, but actually just to say thank you to you, but also to share with you some of our ambition and our vision at the Office of Vice President of Teaching and Learning. So what's our mission? Our vision is to enhance the staff and student learning experience through staff development opportunities and to engage in innovative research in enhancing teaching and learning. We're just using teaching there, but also learning is obviously critical to the whole agenda. So we've organised the office in, in a various ranges and ways to support the strategic plan of the university. So ranging from flexible learning, which includes online offerings, online flexible learning, distance learning, access, maybe not seen as access in its traditional sense, but actually providing pathways into the university, not access in, sometimes we define it in the university, but purely pathways. Talented students, how do we grow talent? How do we support professional development for people outside the university? How do we ensure that our university is research-led? We talk about a research-led curriculum. How do we demonstrate that in the curriculum? How do we support our own staff? That's the inward-facing staff CPD. So what I'd like to do is to walk you through each of those areas and give you some examples of the kinds of things we're doing. You'll notice on the outside then there are these boxes of text here. What they are is referencing some of the strategic plan actions. So we can see that we're speaking to creating opportunities for continued professional development for people outside, promoting professional development for teaching staff and so forth. So it's combining a range of structures and functions across the universities. So let's have a look through some of these. So here, in order to achieve this sort of um, mission, we need a team, and I'm really lucky to have the opportunity to, to work with and work for a fantastic team of people, ranging from the, on the left-hand side here on the slide, to Dr. Seamus Otuma, who's the director of ACE, through to the online instructional design team, led by Tom O'Mara, to the Centre of Integration, Research and Teaching and Learning, led by Marion McCarthy, to the Quirkus Talented Student Programme, led by Michelle Power, and the new Centre for Continuing Professional Development, which is just about to start, and we will be recruiting some staff in there. So that gives you the idea of the, the extent of the responsibilities, and I know you're wondering why the colours are all matching. They are. They're matching, so you can see Talented Students relates to Quirkus on the, on the pie up on the, on the right-hand side there. So it's connecting the dimensions of the structure and function in our office, and a team of people that are committed to advancing teaching and learning at University College Cork. So I'm just going to talk about one or two of these areas. So adult continuing education provides us the pathway of access that I talked about. And we're incredibly proud that we have 27 centres across Ireland supporting this mission. And just look at the map. It's right across the country. It's not just Cork into the region that we might have expected, or Kerry or Limerick, but right up into Northern Ireland. And that's really, really important to us and indeed for our students. Now, obviously, some of these are going to move online, and we still have the centres, but obviously we'll support say, them directly by having people in the community, connecting the community, and, and listening to what we um, want to teach from UCC, but also we also listen to them to see what their needs are. And you can see the number of students, almost 3,000 students are participating in this kind of programmes. That's really important for us and really important for these communities. And in addition to those, then, we provide not just adult courses, but springboard courses, which are particular programs that are funded by government to support employment in the regions, together with opportunities for summer schools and development of staff right across the university. And this brings an important income into the university, but more importantly, it provides opportunity for education in communities that ordinarily wouldn't experience that. And one of the real joys for me um, is visiting South Kerry on one occasion, where I went into a cafe in Ballinskelligs on the beach. And when I went in, I saw a certificate on the wall, a diploma in adult continuing education from University of College Cork with the crest on it. And the lady looked at me and, and just she looked at, I looked at her and she looked at me. And then she ran out and she ran out of the cafe, said nothing, and came back into the cafe holding a photograph of me giving her a certificate at University of College Cork four years earlier. And what really struck me was the pride that this person had in being associated with UCC. And I think sometimes we forget that when we're actually in the, the, the academy of UCC, that these activities reach deep into community, and I'm talking about South Kerry in this case, but you could pick any part of the country where that kind of activity occurs. Well, this is a really important part of what we're trying to do through the Office of Vice President of Teaching and Learning. Students are at the centre of everything we do in the university, or at least they should be, and certainly in our office they are. And what this diagram represents is the modern student, in fact, it's one of my own students, and it maps out the learning and methodologies they use, the digital networks that they rely on. 
And I guess the question for each of us in the room is the extent to which we are familiar with these domains or do we use these domains? And all I can do is speak for myself. When I was a student, uh, I was in the classroom, I did some field work, I was in the library and working with peers, but look at the diversity of domains now that people are actually now working with. And the question for us then as faculty, or indeed support staff of the university, is where are we on that journey? How familiar are we with the use of virtual laboratories, Twitter, Facebook, YouTube, in terms of teaching tools? Because if we're not familiar, we're going to have this gap between student engagement and learning and indeed faculty connectivity. So one of the challenges for us as a university is to see how competent and confident our staff are in using these tools and how we can meet these students on the journey of learning. In order to do that, we need to do two things. We need to understand, first of all, what's the capacity of our staff to engage in each of those technologies. So last summer, summer of 2014, we undertook a, a survey of staff of their capacity and their confidence in using digital resources. And from that, we were able to build up a picture of what people's expectations were, what capacity and ability they had in terms of digital literacy. And following on from that, then we were able to provide support because now we identify what the needs were and thereafter we can build support. So we've built an instructional design team in the university to support flexible learning, actually the techniques and technologies that are used, the transition um, of a team that we had originally into a new instructional design team. And you might say, what's the difference there? Technology or technology, technologists are often techy people, if you like, but actually instructional designers are associated with pedagogy, understanding how you deliver how understanding how you engage with students. So that mindset shift in supporting faculty and developing online programs is really quite important. We also want to increase the reach and scale of our online offerings, and that's not easy to do in this day and age because of public sector funding, and also for the challenges that face in raising uh, money to do these kinds of activities. So I led the partnership of Wiley with UCC to actually enable us to increase our scale and reach of our online programs. And what Wiley International, which some of you be familiar with, are publishers. They also provide an online service, act service, and we work with them to actually build uh, our scale and reach through instructional design, through marketing, student retention, and so forth. We've also had a whole range of uh, drop-in centres and drop-in activities for supporting staff and technology enhanced learning, which was based on the survey. So our staff said, this is what we need. This, these are the kind of supports we need. We're not really sure of the possibilities. We're not really sure how to do things. So by providing both digital resources through the instructional design website, together with opportunities for collaboration and peer learning, we've started to build capacity across the university. And obviously you can't do this without funding. And we've managed to secure some funding through the National uh, Forum for Teaching and Learning for some of these projects. So clearly we've now started to build capacity. So we've got a lot of really people getting excited about online learning. We've got people getting excited about building their own digital expertise. But how then do we make sure that these are launched into the world outside? So we, right now we have a whole range of programs that are partly online, some that are not at all online, but are actually on Blackboard, and then some programs which are completely online. So we have one complete undergraduate course online, 10 master's course, certificates and diplomas, right across the the globe from people in South Africa, France, Ireland, West Cork, Cargilline. So we're actually spanning just the, the local region, but also internationally. And next week, we have the conferings and UCC for the Masters in Public Health, of which one candidate will travel from Africa for the first time ever to be on the campus taking a master's degree. And there's something really special about that, that first of all, that someone has managed to remotely from Africa to engage in a program from UCC without ever walking on the soil here. But what's exciting, of course, is they are coming to us um, to participate in the real experience that is UCC and its heritage of learning. So we've launched this website called UCC Online, where the portal is available that you can find each course that's available online and the kinds of support that you might need as a normal online learner. Um, one of the challenges that any of us have had working online is that it can be isolated. Motivation can be an issue. So we have to build new scaffoldings and new approaches to supporting online. And that's part of the journey we're on as a university in transforming or digital literacy. And in doing so, we need to understand our students a bit greater, perhaps, or indeed our staff. So these two slides represent just a little glimpse of some of the data we started to collect across the university. The student data is 2014. And what this is trying to do is to try and understand the kinds of devices students use, 
whether they're laptops, whether they're smartphones, whether they're desktop computers or tablets, because that not only talks to their accessibility, but also the way we have to deliver some of the, uh, the, the methods and, and the teaching to these devices. Um, it also raises very practical questions. How do you charge these devices? How do you enable diversity of learning through these devices? We now know, we're not sure for UCC, we now know globally that 54% of students nationally, internationally, have at least three devices. And I'll ask everybody in the room to think about how many devices you have. You might have a computer, a laptop, desktop, iPhone, iPad, and very quickly it adds up. Um, and that brings interesting opportunities and challenges for each of us. And then on the other part of the slide, you can see the appetite for our staff. And this is based on our staff survey carried out in 2014 also. And this is a PDF is available on the website. You can see it there. And this showed that 27% of staff were currently engaged in technology-enhanced learning. So these are colleagues who are immersed in, right now in using advanced technologies in teaching and learning. But what's really exciting for me is that there are 70% more of our staff want to engage in this. So that's a challenge for us in our office to actually see how can we support our colleagues in, in developing these tools, developing these techniques and developing these technologies. But of course, teaching is not just about technology, it's not just about pedagogy, but it's also about space. This is a 170 year old university. How do we change the dynamic of space? And while you're sitting there, you're looking up at me, actually the future probably isn't like what we're talking and set as we are today. And I'd ask those of you who are lucky enough to have children to think about a primary school setting right now. And if you think of that primary school, maybe even think of the junior infants class actually. And while the teacher's desk is over in the corner and the blackboard is there and everything else, actually all the students are around tables gathered and working together, learning from each other. That is the future. The future is not a didactic delivery from here like we're doing here today, but actually about construct, co-constructing and learning collectively together. So space is critical in terms of how we deliver the pedagogy, whether it's online, obviously that's the virtual space, but actually in the real space of the university, it's also really important. So we undertook a study uh, in 2015 of the 158 teaching spaces at University College Cork to actually capture what the space actually looks like. And what I mean, what really looks like, we've took two pictures of each of those space areas, and then we undertook a survey of the various resources, the digital resources, the capacity and so forth. How do they speak to the flexibility? How can we support the kinds of ambition that we might have for our students or indeed our faculty or indeed university? And this is what the future might look like. The future on the left hand side here is Nanyang Technological University in Singapore, opened in March 2015, a 340 million euro building. Every teaching space in that building is circular. There are no more square rooms. There are no more rectangular rooms. There's no place for the faculty to hide, if you like. But actually, this is about learning in a new and a different way. And that's what's really interesting to me. Now, you may say, actually, we're not going to be fortunate enough to build new buildings. Hopefully, we will. So the question is, how can we retrofit or how can we change some of our existing buildings into a way that might actually enable the kinds of things that we want to do? So on the slide on next to it, you can see a picture from Coventry University, which I visited last year. And it doesn't look too dissimilar to our Boole libraries or the Western Gateway or some of our buildings, except in two ways, one of which might be obvious from just looking at it and one perhaps not. And the obvious difference here is that every single one of those seats is flexible. You can move around the seats, they're not fixed. So it means that students can actually sit in groups and work in groups in a large lecture theatre. So you can have group work going on. We cannot do that, and that kind of pedagogy is really incredibly important for group learnings, small projects, working in large classes and so forth. And the second very practical thing is every single one of those students has a PowerPoint in front of them so they can charge their laptops or their devices or their tablets, so they can enable them to engage in remote learning or engage with com communal learning even across that particular classroom as, we, as they learn. So what does UCC look like? Well, actually, we're not too bad. We have 73% of the rooms have flexible furniture. So actually, that means we can move things around, we can create the circles. We, we may not have the circle of buildings, but we can actually create the dynamic of the room that we might like. And 27% are fixed furniture. And while those numbers look really good, actually, when you start to see the capacity of those rooms, you can see that we actually have lots of big rooms with fixed furniture. But I suppose what this helps us to do is to plan. This is our baseline. This isn't we now know where we are. And where might we want to go? Do we want to go to Nanyang? Will we take steps to Coventry? Or will we do other things? We'll do something different. And that's the opportunity that these kinds of data help us to, to meet. 
in the same way as the physical space is important, the virtual space is important. Wi-Fi, 68% of the, of the rooms have Wi-Fi. I can get Wi-Fi on the bus. I can get Wi-Fi in the hairdressers. I think it's really, for a really serious about a technology enriched learning environment, 68% Wi-Fi really is not good enough. Um, so I think that's again a good baseline and we can see that some of it is uh, no Wi-Fi, I think 9% none, and some with actually very poor Wi-Fi. So again, we can identify the rooms, we can identify the, the priorities and we can start to invest in them. Charging outlets, I've already referenced the fact that all the devices and those of us who have some of these devices know that the batteries go down very, very quickly in some of them. So charging devices are really important. Um, and you can see again the extent of which we have charging devices, 21% of the areas of no charging devices. How can we enable technology enhanced learning in those kinds of environments? So it's a challenge, but it's also an opportunity to see how we can invest and do things differently. While clearly we're involved in, in teaching and learning, everything we do should be research-based. So we're researching in our pedagogy, we're researching technologies, we're researching in a whole range of areas. And we've been successful at UCC through our office to actually support a whole range of colleagues across the university through the National Forum for Teaching and Learning in terms of seeking research grants. And this table just summarizes some of those. They're not all there because this week we've had further successes. But what this speaks to is the fact that we are constantly trying to improve, we're looking at best practice, we're trying to undertake research, and do a whole range of things. And if I could just single one out, you see e-portfolios, e-prep, um, are part of our future um, in terms of preparing students, faculty, and colleagues to support their own professional development through the development of e-portfolios and showing the world outside uh, their capacity and ability, and perhaps for professional bodies. But you can see there's a whole range of projects here, and that speaks to these competitively won grants to enable us to deliver on our teaching and learning agenda using technology. Some years ago, the university was, had a centre for teaching and learning called Onad Barra and National Academy for Integrated Research and Teaching and Learning. We brought the two of these together now to represent a real spirit of St. Finbar, or Finbar taught at Munster Learn, bringing the spirit of that teaching and learning together with the National Academy to create a new centre, the Centre for the Integration of Research and Teaching and Learning, bringing the spirit of research, bringing the spirit of tradition together to developing something really special. And this centre is led by Marion McCarthy and, and managed by Catherine O'Mahony. And in this, we have a whole range of support for staff. The highest proportion of faculty in any university or any third level institution in Ireland with qualifications in teaching and learning at UCC. Up to 70% of our staff have now courses, certified courses in teaching and learning. And this year is really exciting because we put the programme online for the first time, this academic year. And we have 77 sometimes it's 80, depending on what stage we're at in the programme, um, of colleagues registered on that. And for someone who spent most of their life off campus working, it's really good to see that we can put these things online. Because if you're a busy academic, a busy, research, busy researcher, you can take these programs at any time, any place, anywhere. You can be in your room, you can study in the evenings, you can study during the day, but I don't have to physically come on campus to take these programs. Clearly, we also need to build our international connections. And I've had the privilege of visiting China a number of times, and through those arrangements and visits, we've actually built links between other universities, particularly in China, where faculty visit here who are really keen on learning our pedagogies, learning about our teaching and learning at University College Cork. And already we've had 31 this year, we've had probably in excess of 80 in the last two years, and another group arriving again for summer schools, winter schools, short programs, long programs for faculty, Chinese faculty in this case, but they could be any part of the world coming to immerse themselves in UCC, be with our faculty, learn English through the Language Centre, and then together with learning methodologies and process and teaching and learning. And this is some of the team here on this slide who are involved in supporting those programmes uh, from our, what we call the Circle Fellows, right through to the faculty and support. And again, this is an important income uh, stream for us, but perhaps more importantly, it builds relationships, it builds collaboration, it builds international dimension into our activities. The scholarship of teaching and learning is underpinned by obviously the research itself, and scholars indulging, engaging, and developing methodologies for teaching and learning. And this is just capturing one piece of that uh, excellence of Daniel Blackshields, James Cronin, Betty Higgs, Shane Kilcummins, Mary McCarthy, and Tony Ryan launched their book at an international conference that we held here in UCC in August of 2015. And this conference spoke to the value of teaching and learning at a scholarship, the first time ever this group of people got together at University College Cork, or indeed anywhere in Europe. 274 delegates from 25 countries and 98 presentations shared practice at the cutting edge of teaching and learning 
from technology through to normal pedagogies, if I could use that phrase, classroom pedagogies, to distance learning, to surgical procedures and a whole range of things. And what's really exciting is to hear practitioners sharing experiences and I suppose, back to the survey we did in UCC, showing people the possibilities. Globally, people are challenged by each of these kinds of activities and how can we actually see what others have learned, what others have done, and perhaps where others have not succeeded, so we can actually get up that curve very, very quickly. And it's exciting, and having that diversity of people visiting us and participating with us um, at UCC was fantastic. So you have the team here, um, including Sandra Erwin, who's project manager in, in our office as well. It's a busy slide, actually, that this is trying to capture is really the diversity of research and inquiry that's going on in our curriculum. As I mentioned earlier, you know, we can stand here and deliver lectures, but actually that's not very inspiring. We, we know, in fact, that students benefit much better from the doing, engaging, constructing, generating new knowledge, generating new things, doing fieldwork. Um, and you have a whole range of activities going on here from psychology through to medical procedures, through to high precision instruments, due to the gamelan on the left hand side there. Uh, as another pedagogy. And what this is trying to show is diversity, but also show practitioners, who people are at the cutting edge of their discipline, the faculty and students being inspired by each of those um, faculty, but also by the discipline and by the inquiry, the uncertainty, the inspiration that comes from learning at University College Cork. We've talented staff, as you have already seen, but we also want talented students. One of the great things that we have in our office is the Talented Student Programme. Talented Student Programme is called Quercus. It's the Latin for oak. And the notion is you go from an acorn to a mighty oak. It's also the Arabic for cork. Um, probably not cork as in corkig, but cork in a bottle, I'd say, is much more likely. And what this picture represents is the first cohort of the Quercus Talented Students. These are students who the university has recognised that have a talent. A talent perhaps different than others. A talent that we want to grow. A talent that needs mentoring whether that talent is in the academic domain or it's in the other domains which I'll mention in a moment. But behind every single one of those individuals is a story, a unique story, a story of achievement, a story of competition, uh, whether you're breaking the hearts of Cork Hurlers by Shane O'Donnell, whether you're speaking at UN with um, Joanna Reardon, whether you're speaking, playing soccer for Ireland uh, with Amy O'Connor, or whatever, I could pick out any one of these students and there's a story behind them. But what the most important story is they're incredibly proud to be at University College Cork and we're incredibly proud to have them. They're managed by Michelle Power, who looks after them, um, who grows them, who supports them, who challenges them and actually seeks out new talent. And that's part of what this program is about. This is this year's cohort. So we've only started this in 2014. So this is the 2015 cohort. Again, some familiar faces, perhaps. So some Olympians. Um, I'll let you see if you can recognize any of them. Um, some fantastic talented people, Sarah Jamil, uh, who wrote the love letter from Paris to Paris and Lebanon after that atrocity that happened in Paris, through to Schaefer Guilfoyle, through to a whole range of students here uh, that we're really proud of, Chris Mintron, an Olympian and so forth. So there's a whole bunch of talent in this photograph, each of which has a story. The programme then is about actually growing and nurturing those students, but also demanding of them that they contribute to the university, that they contribute to society. Because with talent comes responsibility. The responsibility for yourself, that you optimize your situation, but also that you contribute to others. So they attend lectures, they have support from Michelle and the team, but also we expect them to contribute back. And each of these students contribute in their own unique way. And the vision is that in the future, we'll point to these students and say, there's a UCC Quirker student. Because these are leaders, these are leaders in their discipline, in their talent, but perhaps some of them are going to be world leaders. I have no doubt listening to some of these, they're incredibly talented, and we will see many of these again. So this, the Quirkus programme is divided up into different strands, and all the photographs I've shown you up to now are what we call university scholars. We also have what's called college scholars, we have also what's called entrance scholars. So the entrance scholars, let me just start there first, are those students that are in the Leaving Certificate, these are students who have achieved a certain point level in the Leaving Cert and have brought, or well, uh, applied for UCC. We welcome them to UCC, we recognise them. We also invite them to a lecture series. I've met them individually for half an hour each. We talk about their ambitions, we challenge them, and it's just fantastic. It's one of the great privileges for me to have students coming into my room on the East Wing. First of all, they're half afraid to come into the President's office, but what's really nice is when they come in, 
you know, I say to them, someday you should be in this office, you will be in this office, or perhaps in the president's office. And that's the ambition for these students. We move then to the college scholars, which are the award-winning scholars in their own college. These are students who are either academically or otherwise have achieved a great deal in their own degrees or programs. And finally then, and we've already mentioned, the Quirkus University scholars, which are both academic, performing arts, sport, innovation, entrepreneurship, and active citizenship. And this is just to give you a number of the total number in the Quirkus University Academy, if I could use that phrase right now. 39 students who've competed coming from the Leaving Cert, but also some coming from within the university and growing within. Uh, and part of the program, so sports, you can see a significant, probably the biggest number, followed by active citizenship being the next group. Probably the only, we think it's one of the few programs in the world of any university that recognizes active citizenship. And that speaks to our values. Each of these topic areas are speaking to the values that we've expressed in our strategic plan about leadership, about society, about supporting our friends, about supporting each other about being creative, about being innovative, and also recognizing excellence and talent through the University Scholarships Programme. So it's a really fantastic programme. It's only going to grow from strength to strength. But equally, they're going to challenge us, and that's what a university is about, us challenging them, and they challenging us. And again, I think the pictures tell a thousand words. I don't need to say very much, other than to say these are incredibly talented, inspiring young people. Um, I see Amy and John Power down in the corner here. Amy's carrying a hurley, uh, she plays camogie, uh, but also John, John Power and all the, the cohort. This is the, the induction, I suppose, if I could use that phrase, of the, of the students into the academy on a special night for them at UCC. Cycle Against Suicide, you can see featuring is an important contribution of these young people to help others, to support them at, mo at times of need. Music, performing arts, you can see it. I think I don't need to say anything because the pictures tell their own story. And it's just fantastic and something we're really proud of at UCC and we want you to be proud of as colleagues in the room who contribute to this agenda right across the university. So finally, um, I just want to briefly say that one of the more recent developments has to build a centre for continuing professional development. And this is about building and enriching the relationship between the university and professional bodies in the region or beyond the region. Whether that, those are accountants, whether they're doctors, whether they're nurses, whether they're engineers, or whatever the profession is. We want the professions in this region and beyond to feel part of University College Cork. When we talk about lifelong learning, we're talking about people taking a degree, we're talking about people spending their time at UCC. UCC should not be a time in your life. UCC should be part of your lifetime. And lifelong learning speaks to that. And we want, in this centre, to present an opportunity for colleagues to come back to the university to upskill, to build relationships, to help us support them as professionals, but equally for them to challenge us. And this centre will enable this to happen. And in February of 2016, we're going to launch the centre and, and start the recruitment of the staff that are necessary to support us. It's really exciting, and we will brand all of the university activities are in our major thematic areas. And this is just, if I could use the phrase, a dummy website, just to give you an idea of what we might look like. So it'll be a portal, where you can navigate, quickly find the relationship or the school or the discipline that you want to connect with and the rest we will make happen for you so that there will be a seamless journey for you on your lifelong learning. So thank you for listening and I hope you got a greater insight into what we do at the Office of Vice President of Teaching and Learning. I certainly think it's fantastic. I hope you get an idea of the inspirational staff that work with us, also the inspiring work that we do with our students in enabling technology enhanced learning, engaging with communities, engaging with society, engaging with industry, but more importantly, that you recognize your role that you play in supporting us. Thank you.